Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptair Owners Club. A couple of weeks ago, on February 15th, uh, 2023, the California Energy Commission released the minutes of their meeting, um, or at least the agenda item for Aptair Motors. And this gave us a ton of information that we didn't know before about um, Aptair's plans and um, and what, what suppliers they're using and things like that. So, this is a 26 page document. We'll go over it briefly. Um, but this is the $21 million grant that they were awarded. The start date is today. Uh, I leave well today, the time of the meeting, which is uh, February 15, 2023. And the end date is March 31st, 2026. So this is a matching grant, which means that uh, they sp Aptera spends the money and then this grant will give them that amount of money that they spent. So it's basically like they get free spending essentially, and they can use the money that they get to do further things. All right. So here are the subcontracts they're using grid change and SWF consulting. So I looked them up. This is grid Change's website. They do sustainability policy, business development, marketing. They, uh, it's kind of vague what they do exactly based on this, uh, um, thing but i think this is what mainly that they're doing is this grant planning and proposal i i suspect that this group uh helped them apply for this california grant and is maybe also helping them apply for that atvm loan um, i looked up jay friedland who is the ceo of grid change and um, basically he worked for zero motorcycles or he still works for them as government relations and public policy person he worked for Pub, uh, plug in america for a while too and then this SWF Consulting, this I believe is basically a lobbying firm, is, is, what I, is what I'm guessing based on their website. So they're based in Washington, D.C., and they work in advocacy and coalition building, cultural competency training, funding development, grassroots outreach, issues development, legislative and regulatory engagement. I think like this and this is basically fancy talk for lobbying. Um, Funding development, this they may also be helping with the ATVM loan um, application. So that it's weird after going through this document um, to realize that so much of the work is basically outsourced. And I, I'm guessing it's because it takes a lot more expertise than they want to grow in house. And so they're outsourcing a lot of, um, of uh, the administrative work, which um, I guess is the way to do it. I'm not sure. Because I, I was thinking that this was going to be just a list of suppliers, but after looking through their websites, it becomes pretty clear that that is not what's going on. Okay, so then here is uh, vendors and sellers for equipment and materials. So there's a, a big long list, Axis Trading Company, Bent River Machine. So I looked up all of these. Now, some of these I didn't look up because it's very clear who they are, like Alafe, we are all we, we know exactly who that is. Um, and then Monroe and Associates, we know who that is. And then Red Viking, of course, they're the AGV supplier. Okay, but there's a couple of other big ones like Bent River Machine Incorporated. They're spending a million dollars with them. Flexible Assembly Systems, two million dollars with them. Um, integrated Automated en Engineers, a million dollars with them. So let's figure out who those people are. All right, so let's look at, uh, okay, so Schmalls. So the this is another, this is a company um, that does vacuum technology. So I'm not real sure what that is. Is there's like packaging stuff and maybe this is, um, part of their solar encapsulation stuff, or this is like a special grippers and vacuum suction cups for moving stuff around on the assembly line. Right, so this is, I think this is kind of like their autumn part of their manufacturing automation, manufacturing equipment, uh, stuff. Then this is some company called Axis Trading Company. Now there were multiple Axis Trading Companies. One of them makes like coin operated um, video game machines. I don't think that's what that is. And there's this Axis Trading Company that's based out of Wilshire, uh, Los Angeles. I can't tell what they do. This is all the information I can find about them. I'm guessing this is the company, but I'm not, it's unclear what they do. Then there's this Bent River Machine Company. They're spending over a million dollars with them. It's very clear what they do. They do vacuum panel laminators for solar panels. So obviously this is going to be their supplier for the machines to make their solar panels. So that's pretty clear. So Bent River, uh, I believe this 
this they're based out of uh yeah here they are they're based out of clarkdale arizona then this is another company uh that's listed in their grant application schnecht which i think is a german name um but i but they i suspect that they're going to be supplying some of these connecting rods and control rods for the drivetrain is my guess but they do a couple of other things too and so it's it's not super clear exactly what they'll be doing i mean it's probably not like wind power or anything like that or medical stuff maybe they're doing fans and blowers for the uh for the manufacturing plant but it could be this um this stuff wheel torque converters well they wouldn't need a torque converter because it's an in-wheel motor but connecting rods you still need those and control rods you need those all right, this is an interesting company. It's uh, Saki Corp that's listed in here. This is a Mexican company based out of Mexicali, Mexico. And they do a bunch of things. And I'm wondering if they're doing some of the, uh, it, it, some of the uh, manufacturing parts that are kind of um, one-off because they are cl relatively close to San Diego. So it would be easy to kind of meet with them and fine tune things um, as you go. And of course, they're in Mexico, so they have slightly lower uh, labor costs. So you could get the um, the parts a little bit cheaper. But that's uh, this is interesting. All right, this is Intra Ratio. This was their manufacturing um, software company. We saw this before the Intra Ratio um, product. We saw this in one of their videos where they were talking about their soft their manufacturing software package. So this that's definitely who this is. There is this Radian laser systems, and it does laser engraving. So there, they they do a lot of laser engraving stuff to, just for cutting out parts and also to mark items. So that's uh, it's a relatively small item. If you look at uh, Radian laser systems, you know they're spending hundred thousand dollars. So relatively a small uh, sell. Then there's Inceptra. Now this is a company that uses that Dassault systems which is also part of their manufacturing um, PLM system uh, for running the software back end of their supply chain, manufacturing, and um, like business intelligence suite. So Inceptra sounds like they're a company that uses the Dassault system and helps people implement it. So they are basically sound kind of like a consulting firm that sets this up for you. So they use this system, the Dassault system, and um, they will set it up for you. So this is kind of more outsourcing of expertise. This is Integrated Automation Engineers. I, I believe this is also more outsourcing of expertise. They do machine, they're, they're helping design the manufacturing plant. So I think Sandy Monroe is kind of doing the global overview, but these guys are going to help with more of the nuts and bolts of the thing. This Flexible Assembly Corporation, this looks like basically um, like Walmart for manufacturing companies. They just sell parts and, and you know, tools and stuff from all kinds of different um, brands, you know, like all these brands. And so they are spending a lot with this Flexible Assembly uh, corporation. If you look at here, they're spending two million, two point two million dollars with them. So that's what they are. They're just basically like a, like a big shop for for buying manufacturing equipment. Uh, Bright Spot Automation. This is testing equipment for solar panels and cells. So pretty clear what they're doing. Some of those um, UV fluorescence testing vid stuff we saw in the uh, videos on their solar production line is probably th these people's equipment. Fanuc, this is a, a Japanese company, and we've seen their robot handling the solar panels. So this is obviously their robotic, uh, one of their, at least one of their suppliers of their robots for the assembly line. And then this is FlexLink. They handle um, conveyor systems for manufacturing plants. And then this uh, Rexroth, a Bosch company, this also handles... Um, automation and assembly technology. So that is, they actually listed them twice for some reason. Here, the exact same dollar amount, and here. So if you see this, uh, 676, 676, I think this is a typo, they listed them twice, but obviously this is a, uh, a supplier of some of the conveyor belts and other 
um, systems for their manufacturing line. So you see that they have really looked into um, how are they going to outfit their assembly line and who they're getting it from. And these have all been priced out and, 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 uh, and they're just waiting for the funds to go buy these things. But they have a plan of how they're going to, um, who they're going to buy from, what they're going to buy from who, and how they're going to set it up. All right, so this is the all other interesting part of this line is they have a task list and the rest of this document is going through this task list. And you see that the low volume production line is model year 2024. And so this pa uh, application probably was put in a while ago. I'm guessing over a year ago. And they at that time already kind of knew that things weren't going to happen until model year 2024. What's interesting is that some of these people, this this application is sold, that some of these people listed in the as key personnel are no longer with Aptera. Like I believe Luke Bachman is not with um, Aptera anymore. And you see here, the key subcontractor is this Jay Friedland, who's the CEO of Grid Change. So he's this he's going to do a lot of like this is a bunch of administrative work. The task one is administrative work, and you'll see what that entails. It's a lot of paperwork. And then seven, eight, nine is um, this underserved communities initiative, data collection, project fact sheet. That's a lot of paperwork and administrative work too. So I think grid change is basically handling that stuff, which makes me think that they were one of the key drivers of getting this um, grant application in. So if you look at this, we're going down to uh, the task. This is, these are the tasks, attend the kickoff meeting, uh, attend this critical project review meetings, uh, this final meeting, monthly calls, a quarterly progress reports, final report. So this is just a paper, bunch of paperwork to give to them, to, to show them that you're using their money responsibly and that you're making progress, which is good. I think getting this grant really um, helps um, put things in a, on a timeline and gives them some accountability to to an outside organization, which I think is good. It keeps, keeps them on task. Um, I know that like when I have at my job, when I have some kind of external metrics that I need to meet with some uh, granting agency, it does give me a little more accountability and incentive to, to stay on, on task, which is good. Um, all right, so task two, low volume production line. This is what they're planning on doing for the model year 2024. And they tell you like what they're gonna do. They're gonna order the equipment, get the low volume production line going, manage installation, logistics, manufacturing execution software, which we, we've seen that's that um, inter-ratio. And then they, they want, the grant agency wants photographs of the validation vehicles and summary of results and a procurement plan, photographs of the Aptera vehicle production line, um, and performance report. And then they're going to do a high volume production line, uh, Aptera battery assembly line. And then this was uh, very interesting. So their task six is they plan on relocating the Ilafe wheel motoring manufacturing line to California. They're gonna they're gonna move that line to California. That is part of the um, this grants uh, requirement, and they want to do this before the end of the third quarter in 2025. So that is very interesting. And then of course this is uh, something probably done for political reasons, um, because uh, to to get these things done, they probably made it a requirement for all these grants that you have to um, support workforce development of underserved communities and low income communities, which I think is a good thing. Um, and so you you want to create jobs and then train uh, people that are um, from low income areas to give them good jobs and create good jobs for them. So that's great. Um, and then data connection analysis. So basically, they want you to give them the data to show that you've done a good job and you've used their money well. And then the final report. Okay, so I will link this, uh, this document in the description below. I encourage you to check it out. I thought it was very, very uh, good in that it shows that they have a plan and they've figured out who their suppliers are. And now they have some external accountability 
um, to to the state of California to show that they're making progress and using the money wisely. All right. So thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks to as always to our supporting members. Have a great day, everyone.